So I did this set where I was pretending to be this snooty film critic type, talking about the ten worst movies I've ever seen, and I counted among them High School Musical. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not about to say anything positive about that movie in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> but bottom ten all time, okay, that was a little harsh. There are much worse movies, and I've seen plenty of them, so I apologize for being just a teensy weensy bit too much on the haterade that day. <laughs> I've also previously done a set here where I talked about Grand Peugeot from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, and what a douche nozzle he is. And believe me, I'm not taking back <laughs> any of those things I said about him. That guy sucks, okay? Yeah. I just want you all to know that, while well, you might think that's a very niche gripe to have, it's not, okay? This guy is public enemy number one. There's a subreddit called Grandpa Joe Hate that has like several hundred thousand members in it. There's an entire website called Say No to Grandpa Joe.com, alright? It's not weird, Mom, okay? Everybody's hating on Grandpa Joe. Give me a break, God! Alright, now that I've that out of the way, I can get into my main material. Tonight I do acknowledge that I will be settling a score with a group of people probably only I have beef with. And that group of people is. Children from breakfast cereal commercials. <laughs> All right. Um, remember watching cartoons when you were a kid, and between those cartoons, maybe there'd be breakfast cereal commercials. Whenever there were children in them, they were just always rotten little douchebags. Okay, there were some exceptions to the rule. Like the kids from the Frosted Flakes commercials, they were okay. But it probably helps that their mascot was like an eight foot tall, roided up tiger. <laughs> I mean, those kids step out of line. My man Tony's gonna make sure they never step again. <laughs> hey kids, the pain in your knees, if you don't behave yourselves, is gonna be just like my delicious breakfast cereal. It's gonna be great! <laughs> those kids were alright, though. The other children from the other breakfast cereal commercials total degenerates. But there were tiers of depravity, and we're gonna go through them in order, starting at the very bottom. At the bottom tier of depravity, we've got the kids from the Captain Crunch commercials. <laughs> Lazy little bastards, the bottom. They were usually trapped in some menial thing they didn't want to do. Homework, chores, whatever. Just totally phoning it in. Going like, I sure wish I was eating Captain Crunch right now. And then just like this, the man himself would burst onto the scene. Like, he was summoned by that Candyman magic or whatever. And he'd bring these kids onto his big-ass pirate ship, get them out of whatever they were doing, and it's like, these children better count their lucky stars. The captain is so generous with his time. This man is old as hell. He should be enjoying the twilight years of his life in peace, not dealing with these stupid children's petty-ass problems. Now, there was always this quote in these commercials, Crunchitize me, captain, which, out of context, sounds kind of sus. Yeah. Who's writing this dialogue, Dan Schneider? All right, moving on to the next tier of depravity. We've got the kids from the Cocoa Puffs commercials. Now you might remember the bird from the Cocoa Puffs commercials. His name was Sonny, by the way. Sonny was an addict. This dude needed some help. I mean, he was quite literally cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. This guy needed Narcotics Anonymous, but for cereal. But what happened whenever there were children in these commercials with him? They would dangle Cocoa Puffs over this man's head, like it was crap over Hunter Biden's. <laughs> what kind of message does that send to America's youth? Not a very good one, believe you me. Now the reason why these children are not on a higher tier of depravity for a kind of, sorta, enabling an addiction is because they were usually absent from the commercials. Sonny was usually left to his own devices to deal with his problem. However, he always seemed to have a way of coming across a table that was fully set, or the bowl of cocoa puffs with milk in it, glass of milk on the side, orange slices on one side, toast on another. Do you think all that crap got there itself? No. These stupid, awful children tracked my man down, laid out this trap for him to try to get him back on the wagon. Absolutely, utterly disgusting chicanery, folks. Terrible. <laughs> Moving right along to the next tier of depravity, we've got the kids from the Lucky Charms commercial. Now, Lucky the Leprechaun, obviously, is an Irishman, which means he's probably been the victim of at least one potato famine during his lifetime. <laughs> Any given day, those Lucky Charms might be the only food he and his family have to eat. But did these children care? No! No matter what, they were always after his Lucky Charms. Did not give him a moment of peace. But I know how Lucky will one day get his moment of peace. He should come out with a product called Unlucky Harms. <laughs> okay. When he eats the marshmallows from that, he'll get to grow to be like 20 feet tall and kick the shit out of those children for all the stuff they put him through over the years. Alright. Apparently child abuse is funny. Very good. 
I guess it's not child abuse, it's self-defense though, so... Moving right along, we're finally at the top tier of depravity, and believe me, we've talked about some rotten children so far. They do not compare to these ones, okay? These are the worst children in the history of anything ever, for that matter. And I'm talking, of course, about those terrible waste of life from the Trix cereal commercials. Now let's talk about the Trix rabbit for a moment. This dude was walking on two hind legs, speaking perfect English, and he was like six feet tall. Obviously, he's been the victim of some pretty egregious animal testing. He must be suffering from PTSD flashbacks every single day. He wants just a teensy weensy little something in his life to make it the slightest bit worth living. And the thing he settled on was trick cereal. But whenever he was on the cusp of getting it, whenever he was right on Destiny's doorstep, some stupid little kids would burst out of the scene. To kick him in the tongue, go slap that shit away from him and go, Silly rabbit, tricks are for kids, for no other reason than to make this poor bastard even more miserable. <laughs> well, it's very fitting that trick cereal looks just like birth control pills. That's exactly what these children's parents should have used 12 years ago. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed my unhinged little rant against an enemy that probably only I have. Uh, thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs>